Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly Caldwell. I'm an outside sales professional for Perry Homes right here in Amira in Tomball, Texas. And you are in the kitchen with me and Chef Kirk. Chef Kirk, what are we doing today? Well, it's nice to see you this morning. Um, today we're gonna be doing a little cooking demo. And a few weeks ago, the team and I kind of kicked around some of the ideas and what we wanted to do for this. And we kind of landed on Texas regional comfort foods. And one of the reasons we did is because, you know, the 300 pound grill in the corner, the tumultuous times that we're going and people kind of gravitate towards comfort food. So last week we did a play on a classic Texas chicken fried steak and today we're going to be celebrating the Gulf Coast um, cuisine with a with kind of a play on a black and red snapper but it's a chili seared red snapper. We got some lemon orzo, some roasted Brussels sprouts and I think it's going to be delicious and I can't wait for you guys to see it. As far as cooking. I had a good question the other day. One of my friends said, you know, I, I love to cook, but I have a problem bringing it all together at the end. So that's a very good question. I get that question a lot. And one of the things I think about when I'm doing cooking for either my family or friends or a gathering is how to finish it all kind of towards the end. So I look at the menu. I do the things that take the longest the first. And for this particular menu that we're doing today, Brussels sprouts are going to kind of take the longest. So I'll go Brussels sprouts, I'll go into the orzo, then I'll finish off with the fish because fish is something that doesn't hold well. It's like broccoli, it just doesn't hold well. If we were making a chili or a tomato sauce or something like that, it holds perfectly. It can hold in the oven for, you know, for a couple hours on low without getting bad. But this particular menu, you kind of want to go in stages. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is get the Brussels sprouts going. So we preheated the oven, this beautiful GE oven, profile oven that we have over here, um, to 425 degrees and we put a heavy sheet pan in it. So we're going to kind of sear it right on the sheet pan. Um, and it, 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 it just gets crispy and we'll flip it over by 18 minutes through. So first I'm going to get a mixing bowl. I'm going to put a little extra virgin olive oil in there. Not that much. Then a little garlic. And these beautiful thyme sprigs right here. Now I could pick these thyme leaves off and get all fussy with that, but they're going to come off during the cooking process anyways. So I just put them right in the bowl. A little sea salt, always sea salt for me. About that much, but we have recipes that we're going to give out later, so don't worry about that. And a little black pepper, a couple twists of black pepper. So these are Brussels sprouts, and they're part of the cruciferous family, which is very good. Good in antioxidants, um, super healthy. They call them cruciferous because it makes a cross on the bottom and cabbages do the same thing, broccoli does the same thing. Again, high in antioxidants, super, super healthy. I love Brussels sprouts. And when they're done this way, I gotta tell you, if you weren't a fan of Brussels sprouts, you will be now. So I already have these prepped, just clean, cut in half. They're gonna go in the bowl. I'm gonna move this down here. Give these guys a quick toss. You can kind of see that, how they're getting kind of nice and coated. So we're going to go grab our sheet pan. And you should be able to hear the sizzle a little bit. And that's kind of what you're looking for. And you can, which is great. So without getting too fussy with this, what I want to do is kind of get the cut side, and I'm going to go ahead and do this. Get the cut side down as much as you can. You don't have to do every single one, but that's when you're going to get that nice sear on there. So cut side down. Again, if you don't get every one of them, that's not a critical. But having a nice heavy sheet pan is, is kind of critical. It holds the heat a lot better. Okay, I think we're pretty good. A couple more. You can kind of see the difference when they come out. Now I'm going to set the timer for 18 minutes. When they're done, I'm going to kind of flip them over just a little bit and go another five minutes. So that's pretty good right there. All right. So when we put them on here, you heard that sear. So they're going back in the oven. I'm going to set the timer now for 18 minutes. Okay, and start. All right. So as that's going, we're going to go into the, uh, the lemon orzo. So orzo is just a pasta. It looks exactly like rice. 
This is about eight ounces. You could put a little bit more in there because it reheats very well for the next day. And again, what we're going to do with this is the orzo itself is going to be the sauce. Typically, I'd serve sauce with fish if I was doing maybe a potato course or something like that. It needs a little bit more moisture, but I'm going to put enough ingredients in here to where it's kind of the sauce itself. So over here, we've got a pot going. Now, Kimberly, you got to remind me, don't let me boil this over, okay? You're going to watch me on this one, right? All right, so now <clears throat> this is, again, sea salt, about two tablespoons. Now, the trick to pasta is you want to do about one gallon of water per pound of pasta. You need a lot of water for it to go around. And I see people cooking it. They've got just a little bit of water. It gets real starchy. Then you get gummy pasta. And that's what you want to avoid is a gummy pasta. So we've got about one gallon of water in here. We're going to let that come to a boil. Just let me sneak by you guys real quick. So in this bowl, we're going to kind of get ready for the pasta to be done, right? So we've got a little chicken stock right here, again with a little salt. You don't need as much salt because the pasta is like a sponge. So when it's dry, as it's cooking, it's going to suck in some of that salt water. So it's going to be seasoned as well. Over here, we have some whole butter right here. Put these guys in here. Right. About two ounces of lemon juice right here. And then over here, I wanted to show you, um, we're going to put the zest of two lemons. Now this is a zester. zester. They also called a rasp. It was, I think it was originally designed to be a wood rasp, but they found out as chefs do sometimes that it works really good to zest things. Lemon juice is delicious and this lemon orzo is going to be delicious as well, but a lot of the times people take for granted how much flavor the zest has. And that's where it holds the essential oils. There's a lot of oil, believe it or not, in this zest. And you could toss it, but you're just, you're losing a lot of flavor here. So this zester works really good. So we're gonna zest this lemon. And you just want the first layer. You wanna avoid going into the white. It's called the pith. And that's where it gets kind of tannic and acidic. It gets real tart. Um, so we're just gonna go zest of two lemons. Already got one in there. Again, just the first layer. Watch your knuckles. You'll know when you hit it, believe me, because you're messing with a lemon. All right. So this guy's going to go right here in the bowl as well. All right. A little flat leaf parsley. So why flat leaf? Why not curly? So there's a couple different kind of parsley's out there. There's flat leaf parsley, there's curly parsley. Curly parsley has a more medicinal flavor. Um, it kind of tastes astringent. It's hard to explain. Flat leaf parsley, they say, well, parsley doesn't have a flavor. It absolutely does. It tastes like fresh. So when you smell it and you taste it, it really gives things that summery, fresh pop. Um, it doesn't have a ton of flavor, but again, it just gives, like lemon orzo, you're thinking of the summer, it's hot, you want freshness, you want things that are kind of cooling, and that's what it does. So a little flat leaf parsley over here, a little olive oil, and we put a little salt in there already. So that's that. So as the pasta's getting ready to go in the water, right, we're going to set this over here, and it's going to kind of just get slightly warm. So our pasta's going, our pasta water's going, we're going to dump our orzo in. And we're going to let that cook according to the instructions, probably six to seven minutes. Okay? All right. So as that's cooking, we're going to use the same things later to garnish with. So when you're cooking lemon orzo, um, we got a little fresh parsley in there. So later when we get ready to plate, I'm going to hold back some. I made these kind of little lemon wheels to kind of garnish the outside of the plate with. I have some more. We have some ground and toasted ancho here. We have some wahia chilies over here. We have some camino over here and a little cayenne pepper. Now I'm not going to put salt in this mixture because I'm going to season the fish separately. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So these guys are right here going in the my little container. Right? 
we're just going to mix them up. Mix them up till they're blended. And it already smells good. So the cayenne's the hottest one. The ancho and the wajillo, not so much. Wajillo, just a little bit of spice, but the cayenne's what's going to give it that bite. And it's, I don't put a lot in there, just enough to kind of let you know that it's there. My thing on spices is great, but I want to get to the end of the meal. If I get to the end of the meal and I'm feeling a little bit of heat, I'm okay with that. But I don't want to get heat right off the beginning. So I want it to kind of, you know, and we're going to put a little black pepper in later with that. So mix it up. What you want to look for when you buy fish at the market is first, you want to see a lot of fish and you want to see a lot of people buying the fish because what you want to do is see fish getting turned. Fish, unlike beef or pork, that doesn't age well. Matter of fact, you want to eat it as fast as you can. So, I'm clearly alive, I'm a human. When I kind of poke myself, I get spring back real quick, right? <clears throat> if you do that to an aged steak and you put your finger in there, that dent's going to stay because it's aged and that's a good thing. You want that to work on beef. It creates more flavor, it creates more tenderness, not with fish. So when you, when you do fish, you want it to spring right back because it's fresh and it's alive. It should smell like almost nothing. Maybe a little salty because it came from the ocean, but it should smell like almost nothing, which this fish smells like almost nothing right now. So, and it's super fresh. Um, if it's not like that, it's just gonna have that stronger flavor, which is kind of what people don't like about fish. This is not the case, and snapper's a mild fish to begin with. So, what we're gonna do now is check our pasta. Fish, again, so <clears throat> steaks, rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well done. They have certain temperatures. If you really wanna, that's a good question, a good segue, and if you really wanna hit the mark on your steaks, more than your fish, or even chicken, use a digital, digital read thermometer. Now there's a thing called carryover cooking, right? Carryover cooking. So if I'm cooking this fish and I want it to get to, let's just say, you know, 140, and this is, you pull it out at 140, you're gonna get what's called carryover. So depending on the thickness of the food, it's gonna continue to cook for at least five or six more degrees. So at Thanksgiving, you put your instant read thermometer in the thigh of the turkey, you want it to be about you know, finish temperature of around 165, you pull it around 155, that's a big piece of meat. It's gonna continue cooking for a long time. That's why they say ten it and let it rest. Steaks, when I cook steaks, I always let them rest too. And just kind of chill out a little bit. They just came out of the refrigerator, they're cold, now they're hot, they don't know what to do. Just think about it in those terms too. You want things to just kind of rest. Now fish, I go right from the refrigerator, right into the pan, right into production. Chicken, I'll bring it out maybe 30, 45 minutes before. Steaks, I'll bring out three or four hours before because I want steaks to go through that cycle more like that. Fish, probably like that, but I want it to be more gradual. You're going to get that perfect medium rare, rare, medium, whatever temperature you like all the way through. It's going to be a lot juicier and a lot more tender. But I'm going to cook it about 130 degrees and then I'm going to let it carry over probably five or six, seven degrees. It's going to be super moist that way. So check our pasta again. Pasta's doing nicely over here. All right. How's our Brussels sprouts going? Seven more minutes on the Brussels sprouts. Those look great, I can smell those. So let's get our pan going over here. So I have a heavy pan. Okay, this is the larger, larger burner, the searing burner. Turbo burner. So I'm gonna get that on about medium high. Right? I've got a fish spatula, you don't have to have that. I got a little canola oil right here. So, first I'm gonna go and I'm gonna season these up high. You want it to rain. So let me get a good shot for you guys on this. When you season things, this is really important. I, this is another tip that I really, you don't wanna season down here, right? Because if you season down here, you're gonna get little pockets of salt throughout. This is too salty, that's not salty enough. This is too salty, that's not salty enough. So you want it to rain. So you go up high and you twist your fingers, three finger pinch, and you let it rain. You can watch it fall evenly. You can see what's not getting seasoned and what's getting seasoned, right? So you're raining this salt down. And you can see it's getting seasoned perfectly that way. Again, not down here, right? So, pepper. Again, a little higher up. I rinsed this fish off, I patted it dry, right? All right, now 
pepper. Now I'm going to give this fish a couple little score marks. Right? It kind of keeps it from curling a little bit. Score the skin side. A couple little scores. All right. Now, salt and pepper on both sides. Now, flesh side. This is skin side. This is flesh side, right? Now we're going to season with our chili mixture. Get out of here, paper towel. All right, again, up high. Up high. It's kind of raining down on these beautiful little chilies. Right? Okay, I'm going to wash my chili hands real quick. Clean up my chili mess. Hands are washed and clean. Boards are clean. This is clean. That's clean. I have this beautiful snapper that we season. Feel our pans getting nice and hot. Pasta question. All right. Little, little taster right here. Okay, that's getting good. Another couple minutes. In the meantime, let's get some pescado in the pan. So, canola oil. Now you could use grapeseed oil, avocado oil. The oil is kind of moot at this point, but what I don't want to use is an oil that has a lower smoke point. Smoke point, extra virgin olive oil, delicious. And it's great to cook with. <clears throat> but I think it's a little higher in flavor um, than is needed for this particular dish. I want to taste the, the fish and the chilies, but not necessarily the olive oil. I'm going to kick this up to medium heat because we're going to get a little bit of smoke. Now, hot pan, cold oil. Hot pan, cold oil. That's where you're not going to get the sticking from. All right? Now, when you put it in, let it go away from you. All right? If you let it go away from you like that, you're not going to get that splash of oil. So never towards you and don't be afraid. Don't drop it in there. Okay, move this guy over there, move this guy over there, back with the fishy hands. When you push on it, when it starts to get done, you're going to feel the grains in the fish kind of separate. It's going to kind of break apart a little bit. Um, but again, ultimately, if you want to use an instant read thermometer, that's really the best, best way to do it. Um, through time, you're going to know. Again. Like salmon, you could probably eat this. You're not, it's not going to hurt you if you get it under. Matter of fact, I'd probably prefer to be under a little bit. <clears throat> when fish starts getting overcooked and dry, I don't like fish. Well, you probably had old fish. You probably had overcooked fish. You probably had one that wasn't done right. So, I'm going to turn the heat up on this a little bit. Give our orzo another stir. All right now over here. This mixture was our butter, our lemon juice, our lemon zest, our parsley, pepper. It's kind of starting to melt a little bit just because of the residual temperatures of the range. Right? So a little longer on this. All right, I think our Brussels sprouts are ready to take a peek at. Okay, so these are looking great. You can see these guys are getting crispy right here. And I'll bet you that if I flip one of these over, look at that. So, we're going to give these a little toss. You can even hear. Oh, you heard the crunch on my mic. All right. So these are looking really good. Let's give these a little toss. Okay. So back in the oven for another five minutes, okay? Five more minutes.
Okay, let's check out our fish right here. Okay, that's looking great. I think our pasta is coming around. Another thing is pasta usually takes on twice its weight in water. So if you've got a pound of pasta, you're gonna finish with about three pounds of pasta. So this eight ounce is gonna yield about 24 ounces, you know, four to six people, something like that. But with the garnish in it, we're gonna bulk it up a little bit more. So let's bring our plate over right here. We're gonna think about plating, right? So these are little chili threads. We have chili in the fish, so we're gonna garnish with a little bit of chili. A little flat leaf parsley over here. Maybe a little bit more pepper. And our lemons. Fish is looking nice. I'm gonna move the pan around. All right, so the pasta is done. Shut the burner off. I'm going to take it over and give it a strain real quick. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're back with our pasta. I left it right in the pot. There's just a little bit of residual water in there, which is not a bad thing for this. So again, our Italian flat leaf parsley. Butter, a little chicken stock, salt, pepper, and we're going to stir. So this is going to be really soupy and really wet, but again, it's going to double as two things. It's going to double as our starch component for the dish, and it's going to double as our sauce. I knew you were over here somewhere. We're going to give this a little taste. <clears throat> this is where you're going to determine if I enough salt, a little bit of pepper. The, uh, the liquid consistency is nice. Give her a little taste. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe a touch more olive oil. You can really taste that lemon zest. All right, so we're gonna put this back on the stove. Just let it hang out. We're gonna put our attention back to the fish. Okay, you can see the temperature of the fish starting to creep up the sides. And you can start to feel that push back a little bit. So, with our fingers, we're gonna flip over. Now look at that crust. Look at that beautiful crust. This isn't hot, so don't be afraid, but you kinda wanna coach it over a little bit. Now look at that crust. That's what you're looking for. So back to the heat, crank it up a little bit, and let's get ready to plate. The finale, the fun part, we get to have a little bit of fun. Let your artistic freedom and flair kind of jump in a little bit. We have this beautiful pan right here. One second. All right. We get our Brussels sprouts. All right. Look at these guys. Oh, those look wonderful. Come back here, bowl. You can hear them. You can hear the crunch. Fish pan off. Oh, 
torso down. Give her a little shimmy. Brussels sprouts on. Fish down. bit of flat leaf parsley all around. Some nice lemon wedges just kind of randomly put around. Let it fall where it may. Food looks better when it's like that. When you get too fussy with it, it doesn't like that. Right? Some lemon. Celebrate our orzo. There's some chili threads because we had some chili. Right? And there you go, chili seared, red snapper, lemon orzo, crispy roasted Brussels sprouts. I hope you guys enjoy. Until we cook again, my name is Chef Kirk. Thank you very much.